Um, so uh, this question covers more of the concept. So, so let me do that so that I can highlight some of the nuances that may come up. So this question says, uh, parallel plate capacitor. So let me just start doodling so that I kind of get a sense of what the question is talking about. I have plates that are parallel, same from side. Um, of some uh, 30 centimeter on the side, it's square plates, okay. So I'm given enough information to calculate the area of this parallel plate. And I'm being told their displacement distance, D, that's two millimeters apart. The capacitor is, oh, it's connected to a battery. So let's say positive terminal here, negative terminal here, and this is 30 volts. Okay, it asks, what is the energy stored in the capacitor? So in this part, I would say, okay, there's a formula you can look up. And the way I actually have the formula memorized is by uh, through the, the definition of voltage. So when we define, or definition, not quite definition of voltage, but one of the basic relationships that voltage has. One of the basic relationships that voltage has is that it's the, the change in the potential energy electric potential energy divided by the charge of the test charge. So um, the the amount of energy that would be on the capacitor would be, you know, this, move the charge over. So you would say, okay, amount of charge times the voltage difference. And if you said that that's the energy stored on the capacitor, just to equal, that would be wrong. It's because uh, there's a calculus reason. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> you have to imagine doing the integral. I think I have a lecture on it, so watch the lecture. Um, and uh, and the result of that is uh, there's a factor two, one half that comes in. So, um, so you have to remember that factor of one half in front of that. So once you have this formula, in this question, because they don't give you the charge, it'll be a little bit harder to just uh, use it directly. Um, so there's two different ways you can write this formula depending on what information is given. And in for both of those, what you are relying on is this relationship. That definition of capacitance is the amount of charge that can be stored on some conductor arrangement per voltage. So using this definition of capacitance, you can re-express this here in terms of two dynamic quantities. I can write it in terms of capacitance, which will be constant parameter, um, times one of the two dynamic quantities. So I can eliminate Q, for example. Q is equal to C times V. So I can rewrite this as one half times C times V times V or V squared. Or I can rewrite it to imp uh, eliminate V. You know, solve for V, which is Q over C, plug that in. Then I get Q times Q, so Q squared, divided by 2 times C. So um, so since we are given the voltage difference between the two plates, if somehow, if we could find the capacitance of these conductor plates, then, um, then you know, we'll be done. Uh, we, we just use the value of the capacitance. And this is another place where you have to look up a formula. Uh, I think I have it memorized. Let me try to recall it. So uh, C, capacit this is the capacitance of the parallel plate uh, in vacuum. It's going to be the area of the plate times. So the version I have memorized has uses a permittivity of free space divide by D. And I'm trying to use this less. So um, at this point, it's probably worthwhile for me to write down, you know, Coulomb constant is one over four pi epsilon naught. So permittivity of free space is one divided by four pi Coulomb constant. So I can replace that with a that. So um, it'll be A divided by four pi times Coulomb constant times D. Um, that should be the capacitance of parallel plates. Let me uh, try plugging in numbers with uh, Wolfram Alpha and see if I get an answer that gets graded as correct. So let me first um, um, try to get the capacitance. That's going to be the area, which I can calculate from here, you know, 30 centimeters squared. 30 centimeter squared divided by 4 pi Coulomb constant times the separation, 2 millimeters. And because I'm using Wolfram Alpha, I can just put in the units as they are without converting. Wolfram Alpha will know how to handle that and convert units. So this should give me the capacitance. Let's just make sure that uh, I get something that's in capacitance units. 
uh, yeah, farads, that's capacitance unit, okay, so far so good. So uh, I take the capacitance, multiply it to one half times the voltage squared. So take this, multiply it to one half times the voltage, 30 volts squared. So that, yeah, I get energy units, okay, microjoules, good. 0 0.18 or 179 microjoules. Let me keep three significant figures since <laughs> that's my advice to you. It would have graded the 18 is correct, but my advice to you in terms of significant figures is keep minimum three significant figures. That way you don't introduce unnecessary uh, rounding error. So, okay, that's correct. So, um, so I can just keep going. Uh, let's, uh, sorry. Uh, there's a bug with the eraser in Zoom that erases more than... <laughs> Okay, so with the battery still connected, the plates are pulled apart to a separation of four millimeters. What is the energy stored in the capacitor now? So you think through, um, so I used to this formula. Uh, let me just write out the full version that's uh, uh, in Wolfram Alpha. So the full version would look like, okay, energy stored in the capacitor is one half times all of this, A divided by four pi, K e times d times voltage squared. So that's the formula I'm working with. And I think through, if I pull the plates apart to four millimeters, did anything in this consideration change? At least enough that I have to say, oh, I need to derive a new formula. And as you think through that, I hope you realize uh, nothing's really changed that much. The formula is still valid. So I should be able to just take it just change the numbers that need to be changed, you know, two changes into four. And uh, I guess that's it, that's the one number. And uh, we should be able to hit enter and get the same new answer. And just thinking through, um, because with a larger distance, your capacitance is lower, so energy stored will be less. And uh, yeah, 0 0.0896. 0.0896. And I hope the question makes a sense of that. Uh, in C, this time, starting from situation in A, with the battery is disconnect, uh, with the battery is disconnected. Okay, so uh, now I can just keep using this formula. Um, so uh, what's the quickest way to do it? Um, I, I think the most uh, straightforward way to do it is to just do a little bit of extra work, extra work in this way. Oops. Uh, so I am going to, even though I don't, I'm not required to, I'm going to voluntarily work out how much charge was on the capacitor. It should be given by C times V. And I can work this out for the um, the initial condition, you know, two millimeter separation and voltage of 30 volts. So, um, you know, 30, uh, the two millimeters, the capacitance. So this gives me the capacitance times the voltage, 30 volts. So this should give me something in uh, charge units, coulombs. So I work out the charge, good. And then I'm going to use that charge in a new expression. I'm gonna say, okay, this charge is going to get used in the expression for the energy of the stored on the capacitor based on this formula, where you have the capacitance and the charge, the quantity you are now keeping constant. So I'll say Q squared, same Q as here, divided by two times the capacitance. So I think I can do that all in all from alpha. I can take this as capacitance, oh, sorry, take this as the charge, square it, and then divide by two times the capacitance, and I actually have to change some numbers. So, um, wait, uh, so this is the capacitance of the thing. So the numbers I have to change is about this uh, pull, things being pulled apart to a separation of four millimeters. So in this expression for the charge, I, I shouldn't change this. This remains the way it is so that the charge doesn't change. Where I need to change it is the ex in the expression for the capacitance. This should change to four millimeters. So that will actually decrease the capacitance, which would actually increase the amount of uh, energy stored on the capacitor.
that was that's the answer I would expect. Yeah, it's larger. Um, so in terms of microjoules, it used to be 0 0.179. Now it'll be 0 0.356. 0 0.356 again, still microjoules. Uh, comparing results in you know in B and C above. So here energy decreased <laughs> in C, energy increased. It's uh, I don't know the first time you see it, it might not make a lot of sense. Like why is energy changing and how? Why in these two different scenarios, the even the direction in which it changes is different. So just asking, um, makes sense that the energy is stored in capacitor increase. So I I'm basing this on the amount of work you have to do. So you in, imagine those plates being there. They actually attract each other because they contain uh, two opposite charges. One contains a positive charge, one contains negative charge, so they actually attract each other. So as you hold them, and as you pull them apart, you are doing some work. So yeah, of course the energy increases. So in the in a mechanical sense, C is actually pretty easy to understand. You can say um, the increase in the energy, it came from work being done. Where it takes more <laughs> thinking through is in B, you're still doing the work. The, the kind of direction of electric field is the same. It still takes work on your part to pull them apart. So why did the energy store to go down? Um, and the short answer is that uh, the energy, the, the work that you have done, it actually went into the battery. And in fact, even more than that went into the battery. Even though some of the energy that was originally stored here, that must have gone into the battery. And what it is, is um, in the process of that going into the battery, the amount of charge being stored on the plates decreased. Um, the, the other choices are simply not right. You know, energy is conserved in static electricity. It, in fact, um, all the fundamental forces actually conserve energy. So <laughs> that's, that's really why the, we can say total energy is always conserved. And uh, negative work is done. It doesn't make sense as you think through this electrical setup, the kind of the direction of forces hasn't changed. So when you pull them apart to separate, the work you are doing is positive work on the big on the donor plate. And um, energy, it, it, choice, so when it comes down to choice between this and this, I want to say this is better. Because uh, ener if the energy stored on the capacitor did not include the work done on the charges, then it doesn't make sense for the energy to go up. So uh, I think this statement is either misstating something or it's saying something in a confusing way. So I'll go with this one. Okay, let's uh, submit and make sure I didn't have wrong answers or programmed in wrong answers. So so this is the question and I want you to do it because it included a little bit of uh, conceptual work, kind of thinking through uh, energy stored on a capacitor. And let me just do the next question just because it's, I think, uh, relatively simple, easy. It kind of makes sense to just to do it now and not have to do it again later. <laughs> um, it says this, a capacitor is used in conjunction with the DC motor. How much energy is stored in it? Okay, I'm given the capacitance. I'm given the voltage. I can just use this formula. Think that's going to work. So let's just do that. So I have one half times the capacitance, 152 microfarad. Uh, times a uh, voltage one to uh, one twenty six volt squared. I think that should be it. Let's see. Yeah, in joules, one point two oh seven joules. I told you it was easy. Uh, you know, in physics, the kind of questions that we can categorize as being easy are the ones where you know once you find the right formula to plug in numbers to, then it's a single step to get the right answer. And with the use of all from alpha, you don't even have to convert metric prefixes. It's easy <laughs> once you know know the right formula to plug in numbers into.